Welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Playpix and Alliance.com. I'm your host today, Nate Weitzer, flying solo on the East Coast with Josh Lander out on a West Coast camping trip uh, for this MLK day. We have a 12 game slate. We have six afternoon games followed by six night games. In this episode, we're going to bring you the player props picks from both slates. If you missed the afternoon games, no worries. We got two picks for you for later on in the night. Uh, so check out our article on playpicks.com for these player props, as well as some game picks here on the MLK slate. And as always, if you do need a fan duel or DraftKings account, head to fdpicks.com or dkpicks.com and find those listings in your local area. We're starting today with the props on FanDuel. Joel Embiid, the hottest player in the NBA, the MVP over the last three weeks. 30-plus points, 31-plus points, in fact, in nine of his last ten games, the exception being the Celtics, who always try to muck it up uh, with their nemesis there and play at a slow pace, slow, slow pace right now. But Embiid in those ten games, 31.8 points per game, 10.2 rebounds, 38% usage, 126 offensive rating, uh, tonight or this afternoon, rather, he faces the Washington Wizards against whom he's averaged a solid 28 points per game on 63, 54, 92 splits in his last eight. That includes dropping 36 in 31 minutes, his last trip to Washington. Uh, he has 30 free throw attempts in his last three against the Wizards, which is key against uh, Wizards team this year, especially that sells out to guard the three point line. Doesn't allow fast break points. That's fine. Philly's slow as all hell. Uh, but they do allow a ton of free throws, the second highest percentage of points off free throws, and recently allowing the third most rebounds per game overall. Recently giving up the fourth most paint points. Um, Embiid, when you look at his home road play splits, it's very noticeable. 24.8 points per game at home versus 29 and a half on the road. Usage rate is up a little, and the offensive efficiency is way up with a rating of 123 in those road games. So 29.5 points, it it seems like a pretty conservative, easy bet at this point. I I would just jump in at at FanDuel and get that bonus there for 30 points in a win, plus 200. Philly coming off a loss against that hot Miami Heat team, but uh, I think they get it done in Washington this afternoon and Embiid. Will obviously lead the way. He's putting a stamp on his MVP run here, and his odds are pretty good for that MVP. So if you if you think he's not going to get injured, go for it. Darius Garland is the guy I'm targeting as well this afternoon against the uh, Brooklyn Nets. You, we as we know, Kevin Durant ruled out for four to six weeks with that MCL sprain. That's going to make the props pretty appealing for Kyrie and James Harden. For me, the all-around props on Harden are too high right now. I think it's 47.5 PRA. And against a Cleveland team that can still play great defense, I don't think I'd be taking that. I would go with both Kyrie and Darius Garland. Um, They're all-around stats. But Garland seems like a slightly safer bet because he's actually the point guard and the primary scorer for Cleveland, whereas Kyrie's deferring to Harden for playmaking ability to an extent. Garland in his last four, 20 and a half points per game, nearly 13 assists and six rebounds. Had a triple double against Utah, career high 17 assists last time out against OKC, which is not a high scoring team. Brooklyn is back to being the best offensive team in the league. And without Durant, they're not a good defensive team, as you would expect. Their, Their rating drops from 109 to 115 defensively in their last three games now. They're allowing the eighth most assists per game. Uh, Garland this year, twice against Brooklyn, has exceeded this PRA total of 33 and a half uh, with a 24-5-6 line and a 24-5-11 assist line. And without Rubio, he's just been a lot more consistent. Numbers up across the board, points up to 20 and a half, assists up to 10, usage rate up to 27%. And his offensive rating, the efficiency again, up from 110 to 117 so, again, 33-and-a-half points, rebounds, assists, a lot of ways he can get you there, and I would be taking that. At 6 p.m., we got Bucks at the Hawks here. Uh, Bucks are minus five-and-a-half, despite having just lost to Toronto. Uh, I'm not targeting stars in this game necessarily, though. I'm looking at a guy who's just ramping back into action in DeAndre Hunter because uh, his prop is so low. It's 17-and-a-half points, rebounds, assists. 
He's been around that in three games back from wrist surgery, 14.3 points per game, barely any peripheral stats, 1.3 rebounds, 1.3 assists. Those will come, though. Uh, he's played 30 minutes in each of his last two games. Probably will play a few more minutes than that, given the matchup. He's their best option to guard Chris Middleton. Uh, they'll probably have John Collins on Giannis a lot, but Hunter is really good uh, to match up with Middleton, and that's why the last time he faced Milwaukee – uh, last January, he scored 33 points with four assists and four rebounds over 42 minutes of run. Um, at home, the Hawks much, much better on offense. They're, they've been playing much better on offense and terrible on defense in general since they, they kind of came off a collective pause as a team. That's not going to change much with Clint Capella ruled out again tonight. So we're looking at probably an over here. Um, at, at the total, that as, if you can get it at an exploitable total, I would go for it. But really, I'm just looking at Hunter to kind of thrive in that fast-paced environment. I'm looking at the, the Hawks to come right back after taking the ball out of the basket a lot when Giannis and company get theirs. And I think Drew Holiday's still out for the Bucks on that end. So it, it points towards more offense. And Hunter, in his career, has an offensive rating of five points higher at home. Again, just 17 and a half points, rebounds, assists. Pretty easy to attain that. However, in the final game of the night, we are going under for a guy who can't seem to throw a rock in the ocean. Russell Westbrook, um, unfortunately, just everyone's fears about how he would fit with this Lakers team coming to fruition. In his last four games, it has been really ugly. Ten and a half points per game, 8.8 rebounds, 7 assists per game. Those are solid numbers for an athletic point guard. But the shooting splits... Oy, 27% from the floor, 12% from deep, a 95 offensive rating. His usage rate, which is 27 on the year, uh, that's way down, obviously, from his Wizards days last year. Now down to 22.9% in those four games. LeBron's is up to 35%. Westbrook's assist rate has dropped from a league leading 49% to 35% this year. It's much, much, much down in those last four games. Uh, and Utah allows the second fewest assists per game to point guards. They allow the second fewest rebounds per game overall on the road because they're so efficient. So I think you can look at the overall under here for Russell at 35 and a half PRA. Uh, as I mentioned, he's only averaging about 26 PRA in his last four and I think you'd feel even safer. The odds are not necessarily as good here, but minus 120 on under 17 and a half points. Because if he can't shoot and the Jazz just got Rudy Gobert back, how is he going to get inside here? I mean, Gobert in his last two against the Lakers, defensive rating of 93.8. That's just absolutely fantastic. Uh, very tough to drive by him and get your buckets if you're Westbrook and he's just, it's just a crisis of confidence for him at this point. I don't think he wants to shoot threes. The other team is leaving him wide open, giving him extra time to think about these threes. And he just can't make any of them right now. It's killing the Lakers. And I, I mean, he might break out of it soon, but I don't think it's going to happen against this Utah team. So those are our player props picks for today. Um, two in the afternoon on MLK day, two at night. As always, please like and subscribe to the page. We will be back with a full show on Tuesday the rest of the week with my co-host Josh Lander. And as always, happy betting.